today is the lack of knowledge. So what is knowledge? As it is defined in the dictionary, it is the acquaintance with facts, proofs, or principles as from study or investigation. <coughs> the knowledge of many things. It is a study. That means it is something that is dove into, researched. <laughs> One of Satan's most useful tools that he used is our ignorance, our lack of knowledge. Yes. Turn with me to Hosea. It's right after Daniel. Hosea 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. And he gave an example of the prophet Hosea. And it's about Israel and how disappointed he was in Israel. And we'll really define what knowledge is to the law. It is not just something you get out of a book. He says, Hear the word of the Lord, O people of Israel. The Lord has brought charges against you, saying, There is no faithfulness, no kindness, no knowledge of God in your land. You make vows and break them. You kill and steal and commit adultery. There is violence everywhere, one murder after another. That is why your land is in mourning and everyone is wasting away. Even the wild animals, the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea are disappearing. Don't point your finger at someone else and try to pass the blame. My complaint, you priests, is with you. So will you stumble in broad daylight? And your false prophets will fall with you in the night. My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Since your priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests since you have forgotten the laws of your God. I will forget to bless your children. Now we're going to turn over to. Now this is an illustration of the nation of Israel during this particular time. Because they had left their knowledge that had been given to them, and even their priests, or say their preachers or their pastors, wasn't teaching them the truth. Mm -hmm. And so they all fell away. And it was the responsibility of the priest to teach them. Yeah. Because ancient Israel, during that particular time, did not have access to vast reading materials <laughs> and information that we are so readily available to us today. Amen. The vast majority could not read at all. They understood language. Uh, they perhaps understood maybe a couple of languages. Uh, they may have understood weights and measures for monetary values in the purpose and the process of uh, uh, for trading and knowing what possessions that they had. But that was not the knowledge God is talking about. Right. To God, knowledge means relationship. In a relationship, there is an understanding. And to have an understanding and a relationship with God, an understanding of his word is necessary and a crucial component to that relationship. Preach. Even in a bad relationship, there is the understanding that there is no understanding in that relationship. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so in 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 1,
1 Corinthians 8 and verse 1, it says, Now regarding your question about food that has been, this is, this is Paul, because there was some arguing about, about food offered to idols. Uh, 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 some got very offended about it. Some didn't care. And, and so it was great confusion. But he says, and this is, this is how he puts it. And this is why knowledge and relationship is so much different from what we understand as human beings, what true knowledge is. Now, regarding your question about food that has been offered to idols, yes, we know that we all have knowledge about this issue. But while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that strengthens the church. Anyone who claims to know all of the answers doesn't really know very much. But the person who loves God is the one whom God recognizes. In other words, it says, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. So you can get to know all this stuff and get all swole. Head this big. Thinking you know it all. As a matter of fact, when anybody talking to you, then there's an argument that's going to ensue because they're going to probably disagree with you. Okay. And they might be right, but not according to you. Nobody's right but you. Okay. And so there you go, your knowledge, and now you are puffed up, and now you have started a confrontation with your brother or your sister, or whoever it may be. And that is not love. I have never known for Jesus to start an argument with anybody. And he was the truth. Mm -hmm. So knowledge to God is your personal relationship with him. God is love. The Bible says that he is. So that is telling you God's knowledge is a loving relationship with him. When he said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, he means they have broken off their relationship with him. They have broken off their relationship with him. They have broken the covenant they had made with the Lord. Okay. A covenant is a binding agreement between two parties. Amen. The relationship with God is a lifelong understanding and teaching of the love of God. That's the relationship you are in. And since he is love, then we need to know what love is to God. Amen. A love that is beyond our human capacity to understand without the Holy Spirit. Like marriage, our vow says, to death do us part. God means it, we don't. We will say the words, but we don't mean those words. Because we can separate after saying those vows with less than death. Jeez. It could be a few dollars. <laughs> or anything else that can come between that may get you upset at what you have already established these certain rules and boundaries within your relationship. And if they are broken, then the whole deal is off. But like Jesus said, he said, that was not so in the beginning. Divorce then was not an option. You were supposed to be able to work whatever it is out. You're supposed to, if you're going to have the love of God, whatever it is, you're supposed to have the capacity to forgive it. Amen. But as human beings, we don't. We don't necessarily go that way. And Israel was married to the Lord. And so is all the other people now who has accepted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ 
as their spiritual fiance. In Revelation 19 and verse 7, let's turn over there. Revelation 19, verse 7. Revelation 19. And verse 7, he said, Let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor to him, for the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear, for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. Amen. She has prepared herself. She has made herself ready. You have made yourself ready because you have had an outstanding relationship with God. And since you've had a relationship with God, good deeds is going to follow you. You're going to do good deeds. Because if you have a relationship with God and you don't have any good deeds, then you do not have a relationship with God. You're only fooling yourself. So I cannot imagine that there will be any lazy people in the kingdom of God. There's not going to be a, a section over here for lazy children. Everybody will be a productive individual even before you get to the kingdom. And if you have a relationship with God, he's going to make sure that that's going to occur. Because little by little, you're going to start doing things. Amen. And before you know it, you're going to be working. Amen. And you're going to be giving. And that's the way it is. That's the way Jesus is. Now, we are his offspring. And what is offspring? They are like their parents. And so this is the knowledge in which we need to know. And because... Now, as Gentiles, as the book of Romans says, we have been grafted in. So we are without excuse. We have been grafted in just as the children of Israel had been cast out. Their particular branch, at least at, at this time, has been cut off because of their disbelief and their disobedience. Let's go over to Romans 11. Romans 11, starting in uh, verse 13. He says, I am saying all of this, especially for you Gentiles. God has appointed me as the apostle to the Gentiles. This is Paul talking. And everybody knew that there was a big rift between Gentiles and Israelites. The Israelites are the ones that had, the, had the, at least the, 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 the paper, the black and white knowledge of God, and they went around themselves all puffed up. They thought Gentiles and other people, if you wasn't an Israelite, you was a dog. You was a dog. But God cast them out because of their disobedience. And they killed his son. So they had been kind of put to the side for a while. And he says, I stress this for what I want to somehow to make the people of Israel jealous of what you Gentiles have. So I might have some of them. They, now they see that the Gentiles know God. For since their rejection meant that God offered salvation to the rest of the world, their acceptance will be even more wonderful. It will be the life for those who were dead. Amen. And since Abraham and the other patriarchs were holy, their descendants will also be holy, just as the entire branch, batch of dough, is holy because of the portion given as an offering is holy. For if the roots of the tree are holy, the branches will be too. But some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the people of Israel have been broken off. And you Gentiles who were branches from a wild olive tree have been grafted in. 
So now you also receive the blessing. God has promised Abraham and his children sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. But you must not brag about being grafted into replace the branches that were broken off. You are just a branch, not the root. Well, you may say, those branches were broken off to make room for me. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. And you are there because you do believe. So don't think highly of yourself, but fear what could happen. For if God did not spare the original branches, he won't spare you either. So this is, knowledge is about being obedient to the law. It's about being obedient to the law. As the branches that were not obedient to the law were broken off, then us, the branches that was on the outside, now was grafted in. So now we all partake of the nourishment that is coming from the roots. And that root is Jesus Christ. So the Lord used the prophet Hosea to illustrate the point with his earthly wife, Gomer. And that was a heck of a name for a woman, too. You could say Gomer. But I just, I put a little feminine touch on it, just say Gomer. Hosea 1, let's go over to Hosea 1 and verse 2. This was A cold situation for this man. But God sustained him. But like some people think that they could go back in the ancient days and if they were one of those prophets, they could even do it better than the prophet did. But God had these individuals do extraordinary things. Things that I wouldn't want to do. Hosea 1, I'm going to read verses 2. And three, he said, when the Lord first began speaking to Israel through Hosea, he said to him, go and marry a prostitute. So that some of her children will be conceived in prostitution. This will illustrate how Israel has acted like a prostitute by turning against the Lord and worshiping other gods. So Hosea married Gomer or Gomer, the daughter of Diabam, and she became pregnant and gave Hosea a son. So over in Hosea 3 in verse 1, because this woman was running all over town. She left Hosea and was hooked up with a lot of other men. I mean, she was, she was prostituted. <laughs> And she was good at it. And she loved it. I mean, she loved her work. And here this prophet of God was married to her. Now you know how unseemly that would be nowadays. If some pastor was married to Rosie Rotten Crotch out there on the corner. And everybody knew that she was a prostitute laying up with everybody. Maybe some of the members didn't even in the congregation and he's married to her. That would be some type of embarrassment to say the least. And he couldn't put her aside. He couldn't divorce her. He couldn't get rid of her. He had to live with her and stay married to her even after she had run off. Now, in chapter 3, she had ran off. Then the Lord came to Hosea again. Then the Lord said to me, go and love your wife again. My Lord. Even though she commits adultery with another lover, this will illustrate that the Lord still loves Israel even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. 
So he brought her back for 15 pieces of silver, it says, wow. and five bushels of barley and a measure of wine. And then he said, you must lie in my house for many days and stop your prostitution during this time. He said, just during this time. You will not have sexual relationships with anyone, not even with me. He was bringing her back to clean her up. This is the illustration that God thinks of Israel. But he made Hosea act it out. That's powerful stuff. That's powerful. I'm glad my name is not Hosea. I don't think I can handle it. So it was up to the priest, as Hosea was one of the prophets, one of the priests, to teach the people. And it was up to the people to be faithful in the relationship. This is the knowledge of God. For if the priest failed to do their job, the people would go astray. And so would even the priest, because they all went astray. And all was guilty. As the Lord put it, all of them were being prostitutes. Hmm. So most human beings seek knowledge, understanding, and experience in order to make it in this life. To live like they want to live. Human knowledge Gain is usually to gain an advantage over other people or to keep up with other people. You want knowledge of that. So you can do this and you can do that. You can get this and you can get that. And some people like the knowledge of things trying to keep up with the Joneses. And so they seek the knowledge of how did the Jones get that car. Mm -hmm. I want that car too. Or how did Jones get that furniture? I want to go to the same place and find out what they did <laughs> so I can get that furniture too. Plunging himself into debt that he could never get out. But we must listen to the word of the Lord as Proverbs 2 and verse 1 to 6 says. We must listen to God's word. Let's go over there. Proverbs Proverbs 2. Starting in verse 1. He says, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight. And ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. And what all this is saying that God's love is what you are going to learn. You're going to learn how to love like God. You're going to learn what love means to him, since he is love. And God's love is what they call agape love. It is unconditional. Yeah. Our love is conditional. You do for me, and I will do for you. If you don't do for me, I will not do for you. Love me first, then maybe I'll love you. Usually, you want more than what you are willing to give. Sometimes folks have it all worked out in their minds, in our selfish minds, how this thing is supposed to work in the relationship. Even down to the smallest detail, what you need to do for me and will not do for me. And if you don't get what you want, 
you're going to let everybody know just how disappointed you are. You're going to let the person know in an uncertain term just how disappointed you are in them because you're only concerned with yourself. You're not concerned with the well-being and the happiness of others. They only get happiness if they make you happy. And if they don't make you happy, you're going to make them unhappy. Until the whole relationship explodes. But not so with God. Because when we have that relationship with Him, we begin to learn His love has no conditions. He has already decided to love us. Unconditionally, forever. Forever, He decided. So, when you take that vow, say you get married and say, to death do us part, God really means it. To death does us, do us part. And this is why his love is forever, because he cannot die. So once he has made up his mind to love us, which he has even before he made us, his love was unconditional. No matter what you have done, no matter what you will do, he still loves us. And he will still love you even if you don't even make it to the kingdom. He'll love you all the way to the lake of fire. And that's love in itself because he won't let your pollution pollute up anything else. Because there won't be no more destruction in all of his holy mountain. And those that are evil, those that are disobedient won't be there. And don't worry about it if your folks don't make it. You're going to rejoice at the ones that do, and you won't even remember the ones that don't. Because he says he's going to wipe away every tear. There will be no more sorrow. So you know if your folks didn't make it and you saw them going to the lake of fire, that's going to be some sorrow. Mm -hmm. You see them being singed up. Yeah. But you won't have to worry about that. Because God is going to take care of all of that. And besides that, you're going to have the, the true mind of God, so you're going to love everybody the same anyway. Amen. It's not going to be like the relationship and, and, and God just trying to show us, but we make that even selfish. The relationship that we have with our family, with, with, with parents to children, with wives to husbands, and, and so on and so forth, that you love your own more so than you love anybody else. As a matter of fact, most of the time, though somebody else, if they ain't acting right, you know where they can go. They can go on to the devil right now. But see, God loves everybody the same. And this is what he's trying to teach us. That slowly and, 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 and truly, that we begin to develop that kind of attitude within ourselves. That don't mean that you're going to be all, all mushy and, 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 and lovey-dovey with, with everybody you see because you don't know who, who you're going to meet and what they're about. But you're going to give everybody the respect in which you do them. And you're going to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And as a matter of fact, you're not going to run your mouth about everybody. You know, like we have a habit of, of gossiping about people. Yeah. And, and what you're doing, you're tearing them down. You're not building them up. And you're saying all kind of disparaging things. Wives and husbands do it to each other. They turn around and talk about their husbands to someone else in a disparaging way. Then the husband turn around and talk about his wife to another person in a disparaging way. And that's opening the door for Satan to come in. Because you got other people listening. Other people listening. You don't know what's on their mind. And they might see a way in. But the love of God is not like that. That's why the knowledge that we need to possess is the love of God. And if you got the love of God, he'll get rid of all of that stuff. And a lot of people do this stuff because of fear. People don't want to love one another because of fear, because they have been either hurt at one point or, or time or another, or they have seen someone else hurt. They may have been even brought up mean. I mean, you got you got households that is brought up crazy. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. Yeah. And they don't have no respect or decency for nothing. 
And so they cannot give because they don't know how to give. They've never seen it. But you got our own folks like that too. Fear to give all that they, they can to the relationship because they don't want to get hurt. People say it should be 100 100. Most relationship is not 100 100. Maybe you got a 60 40. You know, you heard that song, 60 40 love. And that's the way it is. Because we are selfish by nature. We are selfish by nature. And the knowledge of God starts to heal that selfishness, heal that pain, that suffering that, that we had. We are, we are taught by our folks. And some of the things they teach us is great. But some of the things they taught us is not so great. Some of those things they taught us we need to get rid of. Because they were human beings too. And don't think they were, they were infallible because they're not. Because we're not infallible. Everybody makes mistakes. But God says through even those mistakes you can learn through my word. And you can get that up off of you. Off your back. Off your mind. Those things that, that hold you down. Because once you become an adult, there's no more excuses for you. You can't say because I was done like this or treated like this, this is why I'm like this and this is why I, I do people like this or mistreat people like that because I was mistreated. Teach. Not with the word of God, not with the love of God. You can get rid of all of that. That's not an excuse. You are a grown adult. You're able to make decisions and choices for yourself and especially whatever happened to you, you should especially don't want it to happen to anyone else. But what happens to us, because we are carnal inside and we don't look to God, then we'll slip back, right back into that same trap that we swore that we would never do. And then we'll start doing it. But this is why we need to stay close to God. That's why he said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. And that's not to be trembling from him. That is deep respect for God and for his power. And allow that power through the Holy Spirit to be in us. That we can truly love people the way they need to be loved. We can open the door for them. And they can see a way out of the pain and suffering that they have. You know, it's nothing like meeting a nice, friendly person. Mm -hmm. Or any church you go to, you're seeing the people that are nice and friendly. You know, not just putting on the act, but real. Mm -hmm. You say, this is, I like this place. This is where I want to be. I feel wanted. You know, hospitality. So the knowledge of the Lord can take all of the pain and suffering all of us has gone through. And every family is dysfunctional. I'm dysfunctional. You're dysfunctional. But I tell you what, with the knowledge of the Lord, we can start beginning to be functional. Not to say that we'll, we'll accomplish everything before we close our eyes, but we can certainly be going down that pathway. So the knowledge of the Lord is not about the information and the education in the brain. It's about the love that's in the heart. You can have, you cannot have the knowledge of God by just reading the word with your brain. It must be read with your heart through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. And every word that you read in that Holy Bible should be read within the context of love. So I say to everybody, everybody's got issues. And we all got our issues. We can put down our guard, unclench our fists, and seek not revenge. And seek not to protect ourselves from every little thing, every little situation that triggers what you have seen in the past. Because now we are children of God. We are actually protected by God. So we can let go and let him. So we need to seek forgiveness for ourselves and for others. We need to look for the good. And everybody. And if we do that, we will find the knowledge of the Lord. And in it, you will lack nothing. And your relationship with God will be rock solid and everlasting like he is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.